welcome everyone to this uh, fireside chat on day two here at Procurement and Supply Chain Live. And uh, joining us now, we have Natasha Schultz, and she is the Head of Procurement at the Evercare Group. But rather than me telling you all about Natasha and what she does and what Evercare does, I thought we'd let Natasha do the talking and I can sit down and relax a little <laughs> bit. So uh, Natasha, um, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Thanks very much. Um, it's great to be here, of course. And uh, so I have around 18 years of procurement experience now. And I've transitioned between multiple industries such as hospitality, healthcare, and now private equity. Um, and this is, uh, you know, across that value chain of contribution from operational excellence, uh, strategic delivery, and also now recently a lot of work in the ESG space. Um, if you can hear my accent, you'll know I'm from South Africa, um, but I moved to Dubai where I'm currently based around eight years ago when I was promoted from a regional role to a global role. And yeah, I've been spending a few days now in, in London and Dubai is a sweltering 40 odd degrees, so it's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I think that's probably a tough sell to some people who are experiencing the weather here in London <laughs> at the moment. And obviously we have a storm coming in uh, yeah, this afternoon as well. But yeah, Dubai is a wonderful place. Hello, all my friends back in Dubai. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, London is a wonderful place as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people watching this and in our audience today might not have heard of Evercare uh, Group before. So tell us what you do and why it's different. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a great way to start the conversation because it's very important to understand just what a unicorn the Evercare Group is as an organization. So we were managed by TPG, which is a large private equity based out of the US. Um, and our fund is an impact investing fund. And our mission is to deliver quality healthcare into emerging markets. So we're currently focused on South Asia and Africa and we have around 30 hospitals, 16 clinics, and 80 plus diagnostic centers within, these five, within five countries in these markets. Now, TPG set up the Evercare Group as a platform. So we're between the fund manager and the assets that we serve, and our headquarters is located in Dubai because then you, know, you can attract talent, and it's also very accessible in terms of the markets that we serve. So we have a, a small core team based out of our headquarters in Dubai. Um, you know, people like head of HR, partnerships, strategy, uh, legal and compliance, ESG, and then also of course procurement. So my role is head of procurement for the group. And of course I'm tasked to create that framework and strategy at a sort of center led uh, design and then to implement that strategy into the markets that we serve, you know, very operationally. And that strategy, of course, is all focused around impact investing. So it's important to deliver cost efficiencies in, in OPEX and also in terms of our capital. Um, we've done a lot of digital transformations with the implementation of ERPs um, and automation in processes. Uh, uh, I opened our first warehouse in Africa last year. Um, so there's supply chain optimization as well. And then uh, we're also working in the ESG space, um, which is, yeah, which is very exciting. It's really interesting because when we, we actually spoke around a week ago when we were um, uh, preparing for this session, and it's, a, it's an unusual thing. I, I never, or private equity doesn't immediately lead me to think about healthcare. Mm. So let's talk a bit about that. You know, what are the objectives for private equity and, and how, does, how does procurement fit in there? I mean, you're right. We are a bit of a conundrum when you think about um, private equity, impact investing, healthcare and emerging markets, if you say that all in one sentence. Mm. So I think uh, people may understand that private equity is very much focused on delivering attractive financial returns to its investors. And this is through various growth strategies. Um, these are primarily around risk management, uh, capital deployment, and you'll also find various uh, initiatives in terms of operational efficiencies. And the runway to implement these growth initiatives is usually short to medium term. Uh, so you really need to maximize your impact. And this is all before they exit or, or sell. 
Now, the core team at the Evercare Group has delivered significant value for our investors through various growth initiatives. Um, and, you know, if we, if we take procurement, for example, we're obviously very focused on our cost efficiencies um, and also our our impact areas of invest of our impact areas of stewardship so we've got uh, contributions in terms of rule of law and governance um, quality patient care because this is very relevant in healthcare and then also in terms of environmental and social contributions so i think our procurement and supply chain you know colleagues in the audience your ears will prick up because this is the value chain that we can really contribute to. This is how we've diversified. So it's about financial performance stewardship, but it's also contributing in terms of our impact areas. And I think the term that's quite effective there is uh, the triple bottom line, you know, people, planet, and profit. Well, I'm glad you said that, because my next question was along those lines. So can you give us some examples of, of what you've been doing across that triple bottom line, um, which can showcase how procurement has, has contributed um, in, in private equity? Oh, that's a great question and um, you know, very excited to be able to share some of that with, with everyone today. Um, and I think you know, we, we need to realize that the way we do business and the way the world is working today has changed. Um, but very smartly, I think procurement professionals have changed with this, so we've evolved. And it's that evolved from that very transactional buyer-seller engagement um, to now being able to really lead the charge when it comes to business growth and also sustainability. It's a space that we, we should be operating from. So to give you some examples in terms of your question on what procurement has done. So firstly, in terms of financial performance, uh, through various economies of scale, you know, cost efficiencies in terms of leveraging your economies of scale, uh, improving your category management, uh, implementing contract management techniques, we've managed to generate significant financial value to our EBITDA. And that value at our share price multiplier is around $165 million per year. So I think financially we've, we've done quite well. Um, and of course, then there's also capital efficiencies. So the markets that we operate in have had a significant impact in terms of the dollar devaluation crisis. So we've had to hedge this issue um, and through various techniques in terms of single sourcing events, really looking ahead at your capital requirements, uh, tender processes and negotiations and so on, we managed to mitigate uh, some of that liability um, and avoided around 27% in, in capital spend. Now that's capital that can be then deployed elsewhere. Um, so that's on the financial performance side and then taking you to the impact areas of stewardship, we, we've been recently um, nominated for some awards for our initiatives around environmental efficiencies and social value contributions. Um, so it's, it's all driven around within our environmental social action plans. These are ESAP plans that you can develop once you've taken a, a good audit of, of your ESG space. Um, and this is about converting energy consumption to solar power. Uh, in, in hospitals, around 15% of your waste comes from biomedical waste, so improving how you manage this, also with strong regulatory compliance. Um, and then through responsible sourcing initiatives or responsible procurement, we've introduced ESG metrics in our evaluation process. Um, uh, we've also re-looked at our supplier code of conduct. So as opposed to having a document that you issue to your suppliers during onboarding or uh, with any of your major tenders, utilizing it as a tool to educate your suppliers to become more environmentally and socially aware. Um, and then I can give you some examples on our social value contribution. So procurement initiated a, a quality program and the quality program, it was a way for us to speak to our stakeholders. You know, this is healthcare, this is about patient quality care. So how are we engaging with our stakeholders in all the activities that come from procurement? Let's talk about it in terms of quality. So why are we conducting certain due diligence for suppliers? in terms of regulation, licensing, you know, uh, how we receive goods, uh, what quality checks are taking place. 
So we standardize a set of, of um, quality initiatives, but the outcome was also a cost efficiency of around 7%. Now that would have been passed on to our patient. So we're achieving our goal of being more affordable as a healthcare provider in the markets that we serve, but we're also enhancing our social value contribution because you know, we're, not, we're not putting that cost onto, onto our patients. Um, and then let's talk about uh, SMEs or small medium enterprises. So I was telling someone earlier this story because you can argue the fact that we have around 4,000 suppliers that we currently work with, core suppliers, and we're already transacting with them. So in the markets that we're in as SMEs, this is a huge amount of social value. But what I really wanted to do was look beyond this. So I issued a survey with a set of capacity building questions that we had designed through research of the markets that we were working in and also what, was, what were we able to achieve. You know, we didn't want to put something on there as a potential capacity building initiative and we couldn't deliver. So we, we, we worked together as a core team, designed a set of, of capacity building questions and released it through a survey. Um, and the response was then, it gave us an indication of whether suppliers were looking for support in terms of their inventory management practices. Perhaps they're out of stock or they, they, you know, they have a lot of expiry. Um, uh, perhaps they're looking for uh, strategic sourcing initiatives to be more cost effective so that they can be competitive. Uh, maybe it was around corporate governance or HR policies and in regards to wellness or improving fair pay, gender diversity, sexual harassment issues. Um, and the outcomes now have given us an idea of how we can support them with these capacity building initiatives, whether it's my time within their facility or linking them with banks for funding or an IT support partner to get their business online and so they can become more visible. I mean, I've said quite a bit there, uh, and I, I guess there's a lot to unpack. Um, but I think what I would really like to leave everybody with is, is to inspire you that there is an opportunity to work across that value chain. And it's not just because uh, this is impacts investing. It might be slightly rare and very core private equity space, but I think this is an opportunity. And we've heard some great speakers today which has made me see that you know this is this is something that we can activate in any industry and in any organisation, and really what we should be doing as procurement professionals. Really interesting. Um, uh, by the way, are there any questions from the audience? If there are, if you put your hand up, we will get a microphone out to you. I'm just going to go ahead with the questions that I've had from our virtual audience that have come in as well. Uh, now we've heard a lot of um, positives there, as you said. Mm. There's a lot to unpack. Um, it all sounds like it's a win-win all round. Um, people are making money, the people who need to make money, and you've got better outcomes for the healthcare patients mm. as well, your customers. Um, so what's the biggest challenge that you face as procurement in private equity? And how do you actually deal with that? You're right, uh, good question. Um, I'll, there's two things that come to mind. So I think firstly, uh, it's about knowing your stakeholder, and in this case, also very much your shareholder. Um, you need to be able to change the narrative depending on who you're speaking to. So in impact investing, you have shareholders that are very focused on the profit. So when you're talking to them, it's about the numbers. Uh, it's about what are your efficiencies that you're generating and how is it going to grow the EBITDA. But you also have shareholders that are very focused on the philanthropic aspect. So this is the impact journey. Um, and so depending on who you're speaking to, you need to be able to change that narrative. And your strategy is, is the same. It remains the same. Um, how you achieve commercial value through your social value contribution, this is the, the narrative you're changing. Is it about the financial aspect or is it about how we're growing our social contribution? So that's the first one. And I think the second one that really comes to mind is, as I mentioned, it's a very short runway. So you, you don't have, uh, it's not long-term ownership. You, you don't have a lot of time to maximize impact. You put your strategies in place and you need to execute them very quickly. 
Um, and then, of course, they need to be able to deliver results. It's interesting. I was just making a note there as you were talking. So the, the CPL or the procurement leader almost needs to become a bit like a, a storyteller as well, right? Because mm -hmm. you're effectively, and a salesman, because you're selling the concept and selling the story mm -hmm. depending on the audience and, mm -hmm. and the narrative that they want to hear. Yeah, you, you make a, a very good point, and I, I, would, I would honestly say that these, these last few years within private equity, it's not about the, the technical capabilities. It is definitely about being able to storytell to the various stakeholders that you're working with. And often there's, there's multiple board members, multiple CEOs, um, and multiple agendas and priorities. So if, 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 if you come back to that previous question, I think on a personal level as well, this is something I've really had to get into is storytelling. Yeah, great question. Absolutely. Um, another question that's coming here from our virtual audience. Um, how does the due diligence process for acquisitions or mergers in the private equity space include evaluating the procurement capabilities and opportunities for improvement? Quite a long question, but I hope you, you got all of that. <laughs> So I, I think this question is around, uh, you know, what role does procurement play within the organization that will contribute at that M&A stage? Um, so a lot of it is, uh, when the due diligence process is ongoing, a significant part is around risk management. Um, and if you think about procurement activities that contribute to this, it, we find, and uh, I mean, this is something we see a lot in emerging markets is your compliance screening process, your due diligence process when you onboard suppliers. So they're looking for uh, PIP, politically exposed people, sanctions, uh, also regulatory aspects in terms of licensing. So they're looking for any exposure. And then also uh, your contracting. So this is why it was uh, it was important for us to implement proper contract management, proper records of all our contracts, and also having having the visibility on any liabilities. So this, in that M&A process, these two areas are, are heavily vetted. Um, and then, because the, the the ultimate goal is to to grow in terms of uh, value, in terms of valuation, they'll be looking for cost efficiency opportunities that we may have missed. Okay, and we're, you, you're talking sort of about the future there and opportunities. Um, what's actually next for Evercare? So look ahead, maybe the next 12 or 18 months. What are you hoping to achieve at Evercare in terms of procurement? Well, uh, that's an, an interesting question. I mean, I mean, it's been it's been an incredible journey. Um, it's it's got a real sense of purpose to be able to to contribute like this in these markets and of course in healthcare. And I think by and large, you know, we've we've reached the end of well, you know, we've we've achieved a lot of value for our investors. So certain aspects of the fund, we we still need to look at certain growth initiatives for, uh, applying you know the same sort of strategies, but we've had some. Uh, you know, investments into new hospitals, some acquisitions as well. There's some growth strategies, particularly in Africa um, with our clinics. Um, and I think for me though, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying this journey as, as I've been saying, it's, it's giving a real sense of purpose. But I think for now, we'll see if there's potentially new projects, something exciting out there. For the next 12 to 18 months, I'll be keeping my eyes and ears to the ground. Okay, eyes and ears to the ground. Um, we will leave it there, I think. Um, thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you for that. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you.